Hey guys, Super Sweet here, and today I'm going to show you how to make chain tracks with the Create mod combined with Applied Energetics 2. So, the first thing I'm going to do is hop into my crafting terminal and search for train tracks. And here you can see I already have a few thousand, but I'm actually going to need more for a project I'll show later in the video. So I'll switch my view to craftable, click on the train tracks, and we'll craft another 6,000. Now I'll set up crafting patterns for all the resources here, and as you can see, I do have enough to craft all of these train tracks. And as soon as I hit start, it will start crafting, and you'll also be able to see that on the crafting CPU that we have above us in the ceiling. Now let's head over to where I'm actually crafting the train tracks to show you how this works. So I have this crate machine here, which just takes stone slabs, puts iron nuggets on them, and that creates the train tracks. Now to show you how to set this up. Things are a little bit cramped because I'm moving my base around, but bear with me. So as you can see, my AE2 stuff is hooked up to my crate machine there using this pattern provider. And here you can see we have one processing pattern for a train track, which takes a stone slab and two iron nuggets. And we also have a processing pattern for 64 cobblestone that will create stone. And here on the side, we have our other machine, which just takes uh, stacks of cobblestone and uh, Puts it on our depot here on the side in front of the lava where we have an encased fan blowing the lava across the stone. And just like a furnace, it's going to take our cobblestone and heat it up to make it stone. So on the first chest, I have a storage bus on a separate network. Then I have a brass funnel that takes out the cobblestone. The cobblestone goes into the next brass funnel and then goes up on the depot. So here you can see the encased fan that's blowing into the lava, which is heating up the cobblestone. The final stone is then put into the chest, which the storage bus is like taking out of this chest into this little private network that's only hooked up to the pattern provider. And as you can see, I have my export bus set up to only take out stone and tracks. And it's only my pattern provider here that's hooked up to the main network. Everything else is on a separate sub-network. Now let's take a look at the train tracks, how I have that set up. Now once again I have a chest with a storage bus attached. The storage bus takes stone slab and puts it in the chest. So as you can see we have a lot of stone slabs being put in here as they are processed via the machines. And the stone slabs are put out on the belt here via the brass funnel. Above us we have the iron nuggets which are put into the chest using another storage bus. And inside the chest I like to keep uh, some extra storage of extra nuggets so that I always have like too many just in case they're not divided evenly into the two chutes. So now you can see how this process works. The stone slab comes in, we have a deployer putting down an iron nugget, and then another deployer putting down another nugget, and a mechanical press that stamps everything together. And if you look at the track recipe, we're just doing everything that it says here on a machine, and we're using a, a belt instead of depots. We could also be adding sink nuggets into here to you know, make it a bit more flexible, but I don't think we need it. And then we end up with train tracks either way. Oh, and I forgot to show how the stone slabs are made. So I have a bunch of pattern providers with molecular assemblers, and here you can see we have a crafting pattern, which takes six stone slabs uh, with an input of three stone. So as soon as the stone is exported from our uh, sub-network that I just showed you, it will be available for this crafting provider to take into the molecular assembler here, and to craft the stone slabs. And we can actually see if we see one maybe being crafted here. This is connected to several molecular assemblers, so I don't know if we'll see one actually being crafted, but, oh, there we go, there's one. So there's a stone slab being crafted and boop, it's out. And then it goes into our main machine that is actually assembling the tracks. Now that's all for the guide to show you how this works. If you want to stick around, I can show you what I'm using all this track for. So as you may or may not know, I play on a survival server. Currently it's just me and Big Swedish, but we're having some more people join us on the server. However, we built our bases quite far from spawn, so I want to build a track there to kind of welcome them to the server and take them to our bases. So to find the spawn, I made a compass. The compass will always point to the spawn. So I'm going to head over there and figure it out where it is so I can build a track there. And I think I found it. So it's on this ice right here. Now, this is actually quite far from our bases. As you can see here on the map, that's spawn right there. And way over there is my base. And Big Swedish's base is even further away than that. So after planning my route a bit, I went back to the old train track which we have. And I started uh, building a new line to spawn.
I had no idea how long this would take, but I went for it. I think the worst part was during the night when mobs would constantly come up and interrupt what I was doing. After about five hours, I was finally done and fairly happy with the way it turned out. I also built a small station to welcome our friends as they arrive on the server. It's complete with a display board so they know how long they have to wait for the Polar Express to arrive. Big Swedish also helped me design a little train to carry them to our base as they arrive. I think the overall journey is about 8 minutes to get from here to my main base. And to get to Big Swedish it's probably about twice as long. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way it turned out and uh, Big Swedish did a really nice job designing the train. It's a little bit different and uh, I really like it. So that's going to be all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.